Vascular disease, disorders of the veins and arteries, affects 5 to 6 percent of Americans. Vascular surgeon and researcher, Dr. Rajabrata Sarkar. I take care of patients with vascular disease, both arteries and veins, and I do research on figuring out how we can take better care of vascular problems by trying to understand the cells and molecules that are important in the cause of vascular disease. I'm also working in the laboratory on some new treatments for both arterial disease and venous disease and also for some of the military injuries that we're seeing in our current theaters of operation for our troops. One of the problems Dr. Sarkar treats most frequently is blocked arteries. The most common cause in America and most other developed countries is atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. That can cause different problems depending on where in the body it is. If it blocks the arteries in your heart, you can have a heart attack or heart failure. If it blocks the arteries in your brain, that's the most common cause of strokes. The blockages can be in the abdomen and block blood supply to the kidneys or to the intestines. And what is very common is that you can have blockages in the arteries to your legs. Blocked leg arteries can be a puzzle because not all patients respond in the same way to the blockage. We always see patients that have blockages and their leg is fine. And if we do an angiogram, we see that they've grown new blood vessels around the blockage. Then we'll see someone else with the same blockage who is, has a leg or a foot that's in big trouble with gangrene or an infection that ends up with an amputation. And remember that in America we're doing upwards of 200,000 major amputations a year. And many of these are due to blockages in arteries that are simply beyond the surgeon's reach. So one of the things we're working on in the laboratory is trying to understand how patients can potentially grow new arteries back. Some facts are known about the ability to grow new arteries. We know that there are certain risk factors that cause people to not grow arteries back well. Those risk factors are smoking, diabetes, hypercholesterolemia, and high blood pressure. In the laboratory, Dr. Sarkar and his research team study experimental models of those risk factors. And then we can hopefully understand how these risk factors, which are very present and very prevalent in America today, impair our body's ability to grow arteries back. Once we understand that, and I'm talking a long time from now, we are going to start on the road to perhaps coming up with a treatment to help people grow arteries around blockages better. His research has special urgency for troops returning from Iraq and Afghanistan with wounds from improvised explosive devices. And what we see because of the composition of the improvised explosive devices is a tremendous amount of tissue damage to the extremities. So we're seeing mangled limbs, muscle that is shredded or damaged, and a lot of blast injury. Dr. Sarkar is conducting studies to see whether new techniques might be developed to treat those injuries perhaps even on the battlefield. And those involve directly injecting genes, gene therapy, into the muscle of a leg that has poor blood supply to see if those genes can turn on the growth of arteries and capillaries. Is this something that we're going to be injecting into soldiers in the next year? I doubt it. But again, you have to start somewhere. If gene therapy works, it could benefit civilians too. If we had a way to inject something into an artery, or into muscle, in a leg, that didn't have good blood flow. We have unfortunately plenty of civilians that don't have good blood flow, not from improvised explosive devices, but from hardening of the arteries, from motor vehicle accidents here in America, from all sorts of other blood vessel problems. And this potentially could be applied to those patients as well. Dr. Sarkar emphasizes that his research is preliminary and might not begin to benefit patients for a long time, but it has the potential to help change the way vascular disease is treated. So it's a slow process. We're starting at the beginning. We're trying to jumpstart some things with our uh, military project because there's a desperate need for better treatments for tissue damage that we see in Iraq and in Afghanistan. And, but we're basically trying to understand how arteries either grow back or don't grow back.